Hello chums and welcome to the mailbag. This is going to be a thrill a minute ride on the edge of your seat. We're going to sell you a seat, but you're only going to need the edge of it. Welcome. Hello sir, I'd like to buy a ticket to the mailbag. We're all sold out. I'd like five oh. tickets to the mailbag, please. So a sure thing, Sonny. What? <laughs> 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 Please stand oh, aside, is... sir. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Talking oh, no. of cues, here's our first email. This is uh, from Brandon. Uh, the topic is queuing at the bar, a bar manager's input. Oh, this Fire. is good. Yeah, finally, a question has come up that I'm somewhat of an expert in. I've been a bar nice. manager for a few years now, and I can say that queuing is a leftover habit from COVID. Which is oh. sensible. Absolutely no one would queue at a bar pre-COVID, and anyone caught doing so would be swiftly met with a stern look from our regulars, or even called some sort of insult by them. However, since COVID, they've been outnumbered, and people naturally form a queue at the bar. You still have the regulars that come straight up to the bar, but that comes with all kinds of complications of trying to keep a tab as to when to serve them, uh, based on their imaginary position in the queue. I work in a very busy pub in Western Supermare, and queuing is actually helpful when it gets busy. Our bar can get two to three people deep, and trying to keep tabs on who's next in a sea of 20 red-faced OAPs is a nightmare, which results in many an argument and scraps with patrons. Jeez. On, the, on the other hand, when it's quiet and there's only a half dozen people queuing as unnecessary and just blocks the way for food and drink coming through the pub, if you guys have any other questions regarding the operation of a large boozer in England, please ask. Yeah, go ahead. If you've got any cool stories, Brendan. That makes that, that makes uh, what a great what a great mailbag to start us off. Yeah, yeah most... a follow-up on a previously discussed topic he's he's actually nailed it perfectly there you know he's he's just, he said yes when it gets busy it's hard to see who's who and the the smaller folks like me <laughs> you know those little those little old men you know who've been there holding up their tenor for a while hey pl please can i have a ticket to the mailbag um <laughs> step, they get step ignored. aside <laughs> they, get, they get crushed under underfoot um, and they're there for hours sometimes at the bar, so, waiting to get served. Their wife thinks they've gone missing, yeah. they've called the police. Wait, here's a follow-up that might change your mind. This is queuing in pubs. This is from Anonymous. Long-term listener, first-time mailbagger. As per usual, Lewis is part of the problem. That's how the oh. email <laughs> Once you give what? up- I know. Once you Fuck give up- off. <laughs> <laughs> Not again! Once you give up on pub etiquette, you'll never get it back. Period. You are right in saying that the managing the order of service is an essential skill for any bartender. This process could make or break a busy shift, but queuing is always worse. I run okay. a student bar in London and almost every single night someone will start to form one long queue and it's infuriating. The worst part is when they get to the front they're often too busy chatting with their mates to notice and will hold everyone up far longer than necessary. I can only shout and wave at you for so long before I'm skipping to the next person. Those that forego the queue get served first. Tough shit. I'm doing my bit to nip it in the bud early. If you don't want to right. go to a pub and do pub things go to a chain and order on their app. Oh. Okay, two things. One, not all barmen give a shit about, and, and are even trained at all. I read a thing the other day that a guy was like, oh, a woman came up to me and ordered a triple Bacardi, and I was like, sorry, love, that's illegal. I can't serve you that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what? And, and oh. apparently that's what he'd been taught. You know, it's, it's, it's bollocks. Um, a, lot of, a lot of barmen are just random fucking people doing the job, and they're like, oh, you, could, you pour a drink out, and, you know, sorry, barman. I'm sure those of you who make cocktails and have to actually deal with all the punters every night is actually it. You can go nightmare. to you can go like, to college for um for yeah, bartending. bartending school, of course. Yeah, there's and bartending yeah, school. When it gets busy, it's very, very stressful, I'm sure. But um like what you know, well, I did it. I did well, I did bartending for a while and I know what it's like a little bit. Um I didn't do it in a fucking shitty pub, uh, though I didn't do it in a fucking I didn't do it in a in a fancy cocktail bar either. So did, I'm gonna get where messages. Did, where did you both. do it? I did it in the conservative like party's um, <laughs> private <laughs> private watering hole. Yeah, the uh, the 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 did it at, like this this sort of hotel members bar. only club. Yeah, and um, it got it did get very busy, especially when there was like a wedding or something. Right. But, um, but yeah, it was a stressful thing. Anyway, and, and what was the other thing I was going to say? That that. I, I agree about the social thing as well. Like some people, maybe that's the problem that, that at a bar that it's about the priority system. If if you're looking like you're really uh, angry and need to be served, then they'll serve you first. Whereas if you're chatting with your mate, 
maybe you're not actually there. Maybe you're not actually that keen to get served, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, I've got a few thoughts on this. I went out um, last weekend, uh, went out in Putney uh, for, for some drinks. I went to both pubs and late bars, and there were some fancy places and some just average places. Like, we, we went on a little mini pub crawl. A little crawl. Yeah. Um, now, in a quiet pub, obviously, it doesn't matter. They're not in the equation at all. In a busy bar, I think, or pub, there are, there are a few things that happen. If it's a pub, it generally seems to be whoever's there at the bar first, the bar staff will sort of see you come up and then they'll be serving someone else. I mean, if it's like wall to wall people, I don't think a queue's gonna help because how are you gonna form a queue without it going out the door? So I, I think it, it's a silly system. Everybody just has to get to the bar and work it out. You're not waiting for a liver transplant. You're waiting for a drink. It's not worth fucking with a system that's fine as it is. Well, however, it's not fine in many ways, but it is however, fine. How, I agree. However, and, I do have a however. Yeah. I was at the bar in it was, it was a club. It was not a club, but it was a bar that had a dance floor. It was quite loud. It was it was quite fun. Uh, I'm at the bar ready to get a couple of drinks, and there's these two very attractive girls next to me. Right. And I've been there for a couple of minutes. He serves the someone else next to me. Then these girls arrive, and the barman clocks them straight away. What can I get you, ladies? And I was like, "Come on, dude." I was like, yeah, "You know, I've been here longer." He's like, "Oh yeah, yeah, sorry." And they kind of gave me a dirty look, but I'm like. You know, come on. If I just turned up and you started serving me, I'd be like, I'm pretty sure they were first. Just, you got to open your mouth. you got to just say, sorry, I think I was first, actually. You just put your hand up. That's the system. Oh, have, some, okay. have some fucking gonads. And, well, first and of all, it. a lot of people, you mentioned earlier that people just casually insult other people in bars. I don't know if that's Whilst the case, waiting though. for drinks? That sounds too rude to me. Hey, I get me a drink, I, I, big nose, or what? is it, it like that? <laughs> no. Um... I don't know, like, like, like that feels too not English enough for me. P flax, that feels too rude. Um, if you, I, I have to you be, wait, I've been waiting a while. I had been waiting a while. And it was but, like, because it was a busy evening and the, a lot of people were getting cocktails made. There's a problem with bars. Do you ever do the, do you ever do the, why are we waiting chant when you've been waiting for a while? <laughs> why are we waiting? <laughs> <laughs> so, so we are suffocating. Yeah. So, um, the, 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 the other thing I wanted to mention is if the bar was actually busy, you wouldn't have been able to do that though what? as well because because it's when it gets loud and busy, you know, you, the barman leans over to you and you have to yell. Yeah. I'll, I'll just have a, just give me a pint of lager. No, like, I waved or whatever. my just, arm. I mean, he 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 looked at me and then he leaned forward and I said Oh, to, you have to be physical. Yeah. You don't okay. just mumble. Also, I mean, literally the, the, you're not answering the prime question here. Nobody that's talking about queuing in pubs is. If the pub is quiet enough that you can form a queue of the people that need to be at the bar, it's not sufficient people that the bar staff are going to be confused. And if it the is enough queue. people, I see what you mean. That it, this it would confuse them. It's going to be out the fucking door. And who wants every pub to have a huge line of people waiting to get served? It, it's unworkable due to the physical limitations of the space. End of story. But it's just, it's I know, and uh, it's just I'm, I just wish I was six foot tall. Maybe I need to start wearing my like platform shoes to the bar. Try it. And waving my arms around and shitting on people who every time someone who gets served is before me, I say. Fuck you, you stupid cunt! <laughs> Get out! I was here first. Do it. I'd love to know. The last time I went uh, somewhere, we were in uh, Cologne around Gamescom. I was with Ravs and a couple of other people. We went to a a, a bar to have some um, some big brewskis, and uh, <clears throat> we had to wait at the bar. But we were just chatting to the bartender and all the bar staff while they were just doing everything else, and they eventually got to us. And honestly, I think that's been my experience with standing and waiting at a at a bar for the most part. You know, uh, well, like I think that's fine. Like if you're with someone chatting to them, and you're that's part of the social fabric of the bar. That's fine. If you've been set up on your own right. to get drinks for multiple people and you're stood there on your own, I'd like, still just be trying chatting. to attract someone's attention yeah. while someone's doing a 12 drink round next to you. You're like, fuck me. I don't, you know, what you, you're like stood there. Everyone's like waiting on you. Yeah. You know, there's like this pressure building up. You know, it's a common experience for me to, well, it's, it used to be. Um, I think, again, I think it just depends on the venue, right? Yeah. Like, if the bar yeah. was extremely long and thin and had a, Bar width of one. Then, How would you feel would about like McDonald's style ordering machines? That's what Where they have in Weatherspoons. You can order on an app. Uh, yeah. And you just order, and I think they just bring your drinks to you. Bring it to the um, table. I mean, I, I guess that know, means it's... you can order ahead of time and just continue chatting. And if they see 20 pints of lager, they could, someone just pulls 20 pints. You don't have to wait for the order, you have to wait for the payment. 
it's quicker, but I don't know. It, it loses something. There's you, probably you situations where I wouldn't mind it, but um, on the whole, I, I think like I'd I, rather I, speak to somebody. I feel yeah. like I don't get to know the bar stuff. I, we drink at the same pub every night and have done for the last 10 years. Yeah, but you don't stay late. They never give me a glass. They only give me a little plastic cup. I'm, so, I'm one, <laughs> well, of, the, a, I'm one I, of the I, shit You're you shit an outside person, though. You, you're outside on, with with everybody, aren't you? Well, no, but everyone else gets a glass because they know the bar staff, oh. or at least they recognise them. You and just I'm, get a plastic I'm not, cup. I'm not that much of an irregular. Like, I go a couple of nights a week and have done four years. Like, yeah, I don't stay until the lock in. It's a lock. It's like, lock in crew only, really. Is yeah. it? Who get? Who get? get who actually have glass? Yeah, privilege. They get Sorry. trusted. Yeah, they get preferential trusted treatment. It's kind of got to the point where I'm almost like. You know, bringing some Tom or Harry with me so <laughs> yeah. that I can actually get a fucking glass. <laughs> All right, this is uh, for Sips. Oh. Dear, <sighs> dear Sips. Yes, thank do, you so much. Do you have a bunch of guinea pigs? So, have- um, Sam swears you briefly talked to your wife about taking the guinea pigs in from the rain when watching yeah. your Planet Zoo stream in the middle yeah. of the night while high on drugs after her knee surgery. So we aren't sure if this is a true memory, and we don't want to go through hours of stream to confirm. Do no, it's you true. Have- I have two guinea pigs. We got them uh, at the start of the summer. My kids wanted to get some guinea pigs, so we got two guinea pigs, and uh, for the most part, they go outside, uh, except for when it's like raining or like mm. the weather's really awful, then we bring them in. But And their names? Uh, one is called Cozy. I, I didn't pick these names, by the way. Um, no, that's okay. And the other one is called Midnight. Hmm. Oh, my kids! Very goth. My kids picked the names. Very emo. Yeah, yeah. Guess what color Midnight is? By the way, uh, white. No. Oh, uh, brown. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, Stri- stripe. Blue. He's he's no. He's black with like a oh. tiny bit of white. Just a oh. little tiny bit of white. Yeah. God, they're so clever. I know it's so incredible. Eh? The <laughs> kids are just insane. All right. This is this is great. Do you like him? What the, my, the, guinea, the pig. guinea pigs? <laughs> oh yeah. yeah no, they no. Your children. Well, I like what do you my think? Kids, yeah. Um, they make a, they make some quite sweet noises. They sort of go like. Yeah, they get yeah. really excited. That well, we haven't had them that long, and at first they're very. I mean, they they are very sort of timid, jumpy animals. You know, every yeah, little rodents, aren't they? Yeah, every little sound. You know, they they are. They are preyed upon, so I think uh, instinctively they just think that there's always a bird coming in to kill them or something. Do um, they eat them in the, their native country? I'm sure that yeah, they do. Eat. Yeah, yeah, they do. And, they look, they're quite plump. I can imagine them being fairly. Tasty. South America, I think. Yeah, they, uh, is it they Peru? Them, yeah. Are they from Peru? I think, I I, I think it could be. Yeah, but um, they uh, now that we've had them for a while, we have them like in in our kitchen on the floor temporarily until we have a better spot for them. Because we we got some we we got some some plates spinning. We'll have a spot for them soon, but for now they're fine in the kitchen on the floor, like in a cage, obviously. Um, but they uh, they very quickly now recognize noises of the kitchen, which means that they're going to be fed. So every time you open the fridge now, every time you rustle a bag or anything, they go insane and like they they whistle so loud. If you look at them while they're doing it, their ears like move like like their whole wow. face like lurches forward they're like wee 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 they go crazy <laughs> yeah it's cute it's like a it's like a crisp alarm yeah, yeah. like they're just notifying everyone that yeah. snacks are being shared but yeah they go outside them. they can graze all day outside we got loads of grass they love dandelion and grass they they eat more or less the same stuff that terry does so, so wait they're free range sips they just run around the garden you don't have no them in an no enclosure? we have they have a little enclosure oh i was they're gonna too, say are uh, they that well behaved or no 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 burrow under something they would in yeah, yeah yeah they'd get under the shed or the deck or whatever because yeah. like they they're, they're like because they're so worried about everything they're just looking for any shelter but they've got like like a little hutch and like a like a run sort of thing, but it's mm. it, it's big enough for both of them, and um, it's quite good because they they keep the grass trim where their <laughs> enclosure is, and they poop so much that it just fertilizes the, the refertilizes oh, nice. the grass as well. So you got one really really good bit of grass. In the garden, yeah, it, the rest of it is just uh, hell, just and average then, grass. Yeah, yeah, and then there's this like perfect patch where they. Right. Are, yeah. In Canada news, um, this was this was last week, I believe. Um, the Canadian Parliament gave a standing ovation to a Nazi um, in the from World War Two. I don't know if you guys were aware. I of did this. not hear I about did this. Hear about, no. I heard about this. So, yeah. uh, okay. uh, did C- they, did CJ they, has emailed in and said, "Did they did do it see? knowingly?" That no. He, oh, right. So they so didn't they, realize they got he this was guy one. in. Someone presented him as this guy. Uh, I can't remember if he was Ukrainian. I think he was a Ukrainian who'd. 
fought the Russians in World War II. Right. And of course, they all stood up and said, yes, he fought the Russians. Because, you know, now Russia invading Ukraine, very different story to World War II. Yeah. When they were literally fighting against the Russians on the side of the Third Reich. Like, Ukraine was, like, with the Nazis. You could argue, you know, they didn't want to be or whatever. But the point is, this guy was fighting on the bad guy's side. Right. And they all stood up and gave a big applause. And then people were like, uh, this guy fought in an SS unit. <laughs> like, he's not a good guy. So pretty, pretty, I think, funny, but also embarrassing for Canadians everywhere. It, it is, it's but it, it this always happens. Like, it, it's such a good example of... People trying so hard to come across well, you know, yeah. like, and and almost so much so that they they almost always end up with egg on their face. Like this this happens in yeah. UK politics all the time. You'll you know get what? you'll get somebody who You're will, right. he'll grab on to something that he thinks will make him sound good, or he'll be relatable to younger people, or he'll be relatable to like a you know a minority demographic or something like that, and it almost always backfires. Because it's not genuine in the first place. They they, they don't have yeah no they don't they don't they really don't have any knowledge. They have done no research or anything. They just turned up so that they can look good by standing up and clapping and uh, and appearing to stand for something. And they don't. You know they're no. they're just they're just charlatans. All of them. They are agreed. Agreed. Well, I think there's a there's this is this happens to everyone in all walks of life, right? You never really know the people you meet. Um, and, uh, in this case, it, it was just a lack of research. <laughs> yeah. Um, but but you know, you are always at the pitfall of wh what is this this per this this person I'm on a date with? Are they what's their history? Are they actually secretly hiding that they're yeah. awful? Mm. Um, sometimes it's obvious, sometimes it's not, and sometimes they've you know. I, I think you just you can't go through life necessarily paranoid about every single person you meet right no that everyone has but i mean there's some this, this not, is a little different though. this is a bit different that's a little Th this different. is like yeah, a quick I, google I think, I think search what I'm saying is to avoid the egg that's on the gonna face. happen anyway yeah. yeah so at least do your research where you can yeah. what i'm saying is google people google you want to date with someone why not give them a little google, give them a little, give them a yeah, google. Right. i if, mean you can't always um, you can't always get see if to they've the... been arrested for keeping someone tied up in their basement yeah. you know yeah just just give them a back rub a background rub no a back rub that's just what Google to, uh, was going to be called. So we could rub. have all said, uh, just back rub me. Just back rub them. That's what, what it, do you What are you talking about? Google's Google was called originally back called back rub. Look oh, it up. Oh, fuck. Well, thank God it wasn't. Yeah, the, Good God. It, was, it would have been the worst name ever. I wonder, That's so in creepy. fact, if it even would have taken off. Back I don't rub. think it, it would have. It would have. No, I don't think it would. It would not. It, I don't think so. I, I, think I don't the think the name I, is I, a big part of it. Yeah, but at the I, I remember first hearing um, Google, like, this is way back in the day. I mean, this is way back in the day when uh, you barely, I mean, I remember like Netscape Communicator and Netscape Navigator, but there wasn't like much emphasis on a, on a, on a browser or a search engine, right? Like you'd, you'd use these things like, well, you'd use Yahoo maybe as your search engine. There was Alta Vista was what I used Alta back Vista. in the day, but there was, there were, there were a bunch. There wasn't a huge like emphasis on it. Like now, you know, like now it has become very much like, oh, Google it, Google it, Google yeah. it. And, but back right, then- but I remember, I, I distinctly remember I was working in an office, like I was like basically an intern in an office. I was still at school. It was like uh, more like job experience than an actual job. But I was with a whole bunch of like older tech people, like it was a, it was a tech company. And I remember this guy saying like, oh yeah, if, if you use google.com, you can, you can find out about that. And people are like, what do you mean? Like, what is that? Google. And like, I remember everybody being like, Google, what the fuck is that? Like everybody was just like, what is this? And then fast forward like five years. Oh yeah, fucking Google that. Oh, just Google this. Google. You know what I mean? Like it. Yeah, yeah. It didn't stick at first. Like I, I, I really remember people being like, "This fucking sounds stupid. I don't want to use this." So Actually, yeah, Yahoo. and I mean the actual name. Like it sounds like almost now you think about it, like babyfy, doesn't it? Like babies go right, right, Google, yeah, yeah. And, like you, you're like, I don't want to fucking type. Yeah, I don't yeah. Want to and search I, stuff in a it, baby it, name. It sticks like, out. I, I, I definitely actually, remember. Maybe like it. Maybe actually in a in another parallel universe, we're having this exact same conversation yeah. and complaining about how I mean, like Google. Google. Young, younger generations, like that's all they've known, right? Like they yeah. were. Yeah. heard their parents say it they will have heard it on tv it's you know it's something that's mentioned in 
television programs all the time sort of thing. Go Google it. Yeah, Google Google this, Google that. Well, you know? I mean, the, it obviously comes from the misspelling of the Google, which is the one followed by Go- hundred Google. Google. zeros Google. or whatever. Yeah. It's like a big number. It's a maths. really big I, number, yeah. I don't actually know why it's got a name in the first place. It seems it's, it's sort of weird. It's weird to have it. Yeah. So here, here are some of the early uh, um, search engines. Web crawler. Web crawler. I, 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 it rings a bell. I don't know. Go, if I... Go.com. Yeah. Lycos. Lycos, yeah. Infoseek. Two cows. Remember two Yahoo cows? Yahoo search. Daum, which I don't know. Search.ch, which I don't know. Magellan. I do remember that one. Magellan. Excite. Metacrawler. Alta Vista. Rank Dex. Dogpile. Hotbot. Ask Jeeves. AOL Netfind. <laughs> Ask Northern Jeeves was Light, a good one. Yeah. Yandex. And then Google was 1998. Yes. But one been, of the yeah. things you'll notice, a lot of these are called something like search or seek or find or yeah. crawl. Google was just Google. Yeah. Like, it's just a word. And you either, I mean, like, Genie Knows was another one. And all really names that don't mean anything, like Empass or Tioma, which don't really yeah. seem to mean much. So I think it's, well, it's apparently interesting back, to back see. Well, apparently, back rub, the idea was, it was, it, it, would, it would sort of trawl or like rub right. the, the back ends of the, 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 do you know what I mean? It's, it's, not just, it's not just a sexual meaning. No, no, no. Meaning. Yeah, yeah. Although back rubs don't to have to be sexual. It's supposed to imply that it would crawl along the back. I don't know. I think find. it could have been called anything, though. Um, That's a very Pulp Fiction conversation. What do you mean a back rub isn't sexual? I've given a ton of women a ton of back rubs. You they know what they call up. a back rub in <laughs> France? A Google. <laughs> right, here's a good one this is a question we can all think about okay um so i love listening to you let's talk about your favorite periods in history my big interest is ancient chinese history uh I, which is something i really don't know anything about so i wonder what you guys would do if you were the all-powerful emperor of an ancient dynasty here are some historical anecdotes that should helpfully inspire hopefully inspire you King Zhou of Shang commissioned a large lake full of alcohol that was large enough to sail, or I guess move, multiple canoes in. In the center of the lake was a small island which contained a forest where the branches on the trees were skewered meat. And King Zhou would sail around on the lake or, you know, boat around on the lake with his drinking buddies. They even had a few orgies on the island, presumably not with his buddies, as the email says. Alcohol lakes and meat forests is now a Chinese idiom that refers to ludicrous amounts of excess. Yeah. Uh, and there's some evidence that the alcohol lake may have actually existed. That's one. And number two, Emperor Wu of Jin <clears throat> was noted for constructing a huge palace which contained houses for 5,000 beautiful women. Faced with the dilemma of not knowing which of these concubines he should spend the night with, he rode around the palace on a cart drawn by a group of goats. Wherever the ghost decided to rest, he would spend the night with whichever concubine lived closest. In order to secure the honor of potentially bearing a son to the emperor, the women would place salt and bamboo leaves close to their doors in an attempt to woo the goats into stopping. So, your imperial majesties, what would you do if you were this kind of uh, alcohol lake and meat forest wealthy guy in ancient China? It would have to be in ancient China. I, I think so. I think we could so just say the, anywhere. The, the Elon Musk or the Jeff Bezos of their day Absolutely. had a swimming pool full of booze and um, a, a forest of, of like, like kind of like Willy Wonka's factory, only with meat instead of chocolate. I guess so, you know? yeah. So you've basically got not just the money, but also because you also have a title. Like if we went back, 5,000 years. Nobody would be making fun of Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos because they'd be enormously powerful and you'd probably be killed for making fun of them because they'd probably be an emperor or something like that. Yeah, yeah. So, their egos would be so fragile so that they'd fragile. send out a hitman to like kill right. you. Right, and I mean, yeah. you know, that's sedition talking about the king in a bad way or, you know, what, heresy if they're a holy figure or whatever. So we're much freer now. Oh, yeah, now. you could just be arrested by the state. You're right, they could just be they like, don't even have to you do shit secret. talk the king, you're under arrest. And people are like, yeah, you don't shit talk the king. Yeah. Fair enough. Nowadays, of course, any, anybody's up for grabs. I mean, we can make Anything fun of, of the king, whatever we want. No problemo. So with that level, going back, we not don't think modern day. We're so powerful that basically whatever we do, people will say, yeah, that's a great idea. He's the king. He can do what he likes and you can't say anything. What could it be? I don't know. I mean, like my knee jerk reaction revolves around something sexual. But like, <laughs> if I think about it more, I think like, I don't know, maybe I wouldn't, you know, like maybe for like a couple of days, that would be pretty fun. But I don't know if I would use all of my wealth and power to make like, um, you know, 
a, gi- a gigantic orgy. You, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like, but like a long running one. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, just a continual. Just yeah. people like tapping like, in, It's tapping like just out. like the Hugh Hefner of uh, of his time or whatever. You know, yeah. like he's just built a mansion dedicated to. I I don't know if I would if I would go down that road. I'd be tempted for sure, but I don't know so if I, I. I think we're all coming at this from like modern morality, where obviously having five thousand women that essentially are forced to sleep with you just because you're the emperor, yeah, is morally abhorrent and yeah. not something that I would be like, oh yeah, I'll do that. Um, so I think it would be it would have to be something that steers away. I think from... you just need to be um, what's his name um. <laughs> Fucking Genghis Khan? No, no, no. The guy in <laughs> in, in June. Um, Paul Atreides. Timothy Chalamet. That's all you need to have five thousand women sleep with you. You'd just be Timothy you know. Chalamet, or or yeah, just be a famous actor. I I mean, I know that some friends of mine were talking about what we would do if, if we were we were wealthy. And a friend of mine said he would buy a whole street, like a nice street, and there are houses, and every friend gets a house. So we all live in the same neighborhood, and you build a community yeah. out of people you know. And That's friends. a nice idea. Yeah, I like that. That's sweet. Um, I would go one further and say it would be nice to build have a small village not just one street but a village where i know everybody there like the oppenheimer village the exactly end. right like yeah. the one they built in oppenheimer you build but a closed city with fewer weapons of mass destruction you know i mean yeah. just you know so everything is to our taste and i think it would be really fun um so yeah i think i would use it for something like that making sure that people i really liked and cared about had a pleasant life didn't have to worry about money and could just relax and do what they wanted to do that would be it. Yeah, that's 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 a nice dream. What if what um, what if though you did all that and then somebody you know pissed you off down the road? Well, I and mean, you harbored I th- huge resentments because you're like, I fucking bought this guy his fucking house. He yeah. gets to live in my village or whatever. I'm going to the council. We're going to vote him out. And then all yeah, of a sudden you've got a Woodbury situation like in uh, The Walking Dead. You know, I mean, you, I, are exactly. you going to be that guy with the eye patch? Yeah, I'd, I'd be the guy. I mean, here's the thing I, I would say well, that I didn't mention is in order to live in the village, uh, let's say you, you arrive have as, to a fuck cu- me. as a couple. <laughs> yes, you, you have, I, I have Every to fuck your wife. That's the way it, you're it's just like, being, I get to fuck So everyone. what you're describing is you would like to be David <laughs> Koresh. That's, <laughs> yes, yeah, you've got Yeah. We'll call it Waco. Yeah. That's what we'll call the place. We'll call the place the compound. The compound, yeah. yeah well, I don't think it, I don't think time. these things ever work out, though. There's no there's no example of any of these things long running, no. right? where everybody sort of you know transitions into older life, and you know th- there's harmony and stuff. These 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 things. No, it's like Always we said earlier, bad. people <laughs> people turn out to be change. People turn out to either be awful or they change. To be someone awful, yeah, and, it's, it's, and then they're in the village and ruining it, and you're like, "Oh god, how do we kick this out?" The problem with humans generally is that we're very good at generating drama. I don't yeah. think they're even designed in small communities. I don't think they're designed to stay together as long as we would like to think that they do. You know what I mean? Like, I think well, people like, we're not like pigeons or whatever that mate for life. Is it pigeons? There's I think it just people that... get old and crusty, and they just don't want to be around people, and they yeah. They become themselves quite insufferable as well. Like it's, <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah, like I, I, I don't think yeah. humans age very gracefully. I definitely originally had that I, same dream of building this, you know, shared space where we could all be live together and work together, and you know, have this kind of ideal communist supporty structure thing. But in reality, I just know that it wouldn't work. Yeah, because because I've seen. People change and people come and go, and and the problems that that has caused. And I think I think the reason that we live in the way we live at the moment, doing the nine to five, and you know all you know li- living, having people as they are, is because that's just naturally what has worked best with all of the community and drama and si- systems that yeah. we've we've got. I'm not saying it's good uh, or the best, and uh, maybe it would be all nice to live in a. A, a cult mm. compound. I don't know if with it a, would. with a charismatic no, Jesus like figure. I think, figure it, I think it would be fine until somebody was like, "All right, it's it's fucking time," and you're like, "Wait, what? I no." <laughs> and uh, and <laughs> yeah. that's when that's when I no, think the whole- <laughs> we have to kill ourselves ritually. Yes, so- every, everybody <laughs> into your sleeping bags. <laughs> I'm I'm opening the gas valve. Um, yeah, you know, it's it I think, works, yeah. There's there. I, I just there's cutoff points. I, I, where, when, when I come down to like looking at the world, I I realize that 
this is the the way it is is often because this is how people have and people are trying their best right to make a happy environment for themselves and their family and their friends right everyone is clearly and they they want to i mean i think that yeah you want it, it is people's first instinct to say you know oh, what happens if you won the lottery they'd be like oh yeah i just want to make sure i look after everyone i love yeah i mean that's like a very normal thing well i mean i, I, that I, is I what's look after generally. everyone i love every day i don't need to win the lottery to to do that you know what i mean I, i'm i'm doing it right exactly. now exactly i'm not doing yeah. it in a grandiose fashion <laughs> You know, I'm not I'm not Hank Scorpio. I haven't set up uh, Globex Village for everybody I <laughs> I know. Um, no, but, but you're I'm doing taking it in care way, of my immediate in the same people. way that other yeah. pe- that, that is almost like that other people have done and is a standard a uh, safe yeah. thing. You know, you're not doing it in some creative way where you feel like, oh, you know, I need to encase my whole house in plastic or whatever, right? Yeah. But if everyone else was encasing their house in plastic to seal away all the bacteria, you'd, yeah. you'd feel the pressure to do that as well, right? right? Like, we are sheep and we are people who copy other people because we feel like we need to fit in, but also we don't know best. Almost like, you know, it's like, well, enough people do this and they seem to get along. You know, a lot, enough people have jobs and have kids and buy houses and they seem to. So I'll just do that as well. Yeah. yeah. It takes it takes a lot to buck that trend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I got another one here. Let me just take my vitamins real quick. Hold on. What oh. are you uh, What All are right. you popping these days? Centrum 50s. Mm-hmm. Centrum 50 plus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the big boys. And vitamin C. Yeah, we got vitamin C in there too. Holy it's, uh, crap. So that's the, I, I, I take the extra vitamin C and the extra zinc because, um, and I sometimes take extra vitamin D as well. I don't know why. I, I do eat a pretty balanced diet, but I think my body has a hard time holding on to vitamin D. I don't know why. I don't know why. Right. I, I did see a doctor about it a few years ago when I had a big top up. But in general, a lot of most people in the UK are, are vitamin D deficient. Anyway. Do you try this podcast? He topped you up on the D. It's sun. lack of sun. I found your conversation on taxidermy interesting. <laughs> I live in northern Minnesota, oh. and it's very common for a home to have multiple taxidermy animals since hunting and fishing are very popular here. My father being an avid hunter, trapper, and fisherman, I grew up with taxidermy deer heads, foxes, various fish and animal pelts as regular household decor. My father even has wow. the first ever caught lynx slash bobcat hybrid stuffed in our basement. Wow. They knew they existed, but he caught the first one on record, and the Department of Natural Resources kept it for testing for a few years before returning it to him. I've never come across anyone else who had a pet stuffed, but we do have a family friend that does taxidermy, and I thought you might find these taxidermy squirrels he made entertaining. Now I'm going to pop these pictures in the Discord for you chaps to look at, and uh, I want to hear uh, your reactions to these. All right, slowly, all right. one at a time. No, I've done them all at once for effect. Oh my Jesus God! Jesus Christ! Describe what, what you are seeing, fuck? gentlemen. I am seeing so, basically a scene from a brothel in Game of Thrones, but it's squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> right. So yeah, uh, the first picture is, I guess we would say, two squirrels doing it squirrel style, <laughs> doggy <laughs> style, <laughs> yeah, big time. <laughs> Uh, there's some, there's some major weird. back arching from one. There of is the... a lot of back arching. Yeah. Uh, th- these wow, are, that is quite horrifying. This is like the Kama fact. Sutra, but with squirrels. Yes. Um, the second so one... imagine sexual positions, and the squirrels are the ones doing the fucking. Um, yeah. and the, oh my god. The lady squirrel is having the time of her life. We'll put it that way. Um, this I find this very disturbing. Not just because someone very took disturbing. the time to make this, but also I feel like this is really unpleasantly using a living thing's body for a cheap, really cheap gag. They're pelts. I, I, I think really it's horrible. Cheap. Absolutely horrible. Really cheap and kind of seedy and gross gag Very as well. seedy like, and gross. But the thing is, the way it's done, okay... It's well done! Is, it's done so professionally. It's on like a really <laughs> shiny mahogany base. He's done like the ground, yeah. like the muddy ground He's really like, nicely. He's got like little twigs and little... These are like little, Ben's little, miniatures. Little, little autumn leaves. <laughs> it's like so beautifully done. Yeah, we could use these in a bolt action tabletop series, Lewis. These are so well based. It would need to be so about, you know... <sighs> they are based. The British Army. <laughs> <laughs> they are not, they are not based. Oh, it's so gross. Oh, oh my god. Oh, oh my dearie god. Me. Do not look up, do not try and look that up. We're not going to post them anywhere. That squirrel sex taxidermy is just for yeah. us and that guy's dad. Um good grief. That's that's it's it's, it's not it's not it's not it's not traumatic. It's unpleasant. But it is, it's wrong. Yeah. It's it's wrong somehow. It does, yeah. It leaves um, a sour taste in your mouth. Okay. Big, All right, big sorry. Time. Um 
<laughs> yeah. I think it's because I, it's, I think it's because I was also looking at um, the guinea pigs just before this. <laughs> do you know what I mean? As I'm still thinking about Sips's two guinea pigs, and now yeah, you can you imagine know. them outside in their run. It's fucking <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, blowing but each not other only fucking stuff. just doing yeah. the weirdest sexual positions. Yeah. Yeah. All okay. right, this is for Lewis. Last Friday, uh, the 29th, I j bumped into Lewis just outside of Queen Square. As a longtime fan of the Triforce, I was very excited to see him. However, okay. when I accosted him, I slightly froze and just sort of mumbled at him. So, Lewis, I apologize. However, the thing that stood out most to me was how Lewis was much more attractive in real life than I had assumed. So much so, I was a up. tad taken aback, and this didn't help the mumbling and rambling. So, Lewis, I'm very sorry, but you're a very handsome man. Well, there you go, yeah. Lewis. Well, I'd, I'd shaved my, my beard and Someone my out beard there. off, you see. I've got the baby face going on at the moment. Yeah, do you? Yeah. Gosh. And, uh, he does. I think, I think that's working for me. <laughs> no, I don't know if it is. Nice. Nice. <laughs> uh, it's just a change. I'm, I'm, I've... I've um, I'm gonna grow the moustache for November, okay. so don't worry. It's gonna go back to creepy, da creepy dad, Lewis. I like, very the, I liked you with a beard. I thought, it, I thought it suited you. But the th I like the moustache so much though because it has such good comedy value. <laughs> everyone, no one, no one, like, like everyone I think would, would just see really me and start suit like a pen, like a pencil moustache, like a Brian Ferry. You know, you should go. <laughs> you've got the right. You've got the right face for something like. You but you could can't have the moustache all the time, mm. right? Because it has to be something that's a surprise. But I, but over Jingle Jam, everyone would come down, see me with the moustache, and instantly like you. You tell they would like. They so thought it was funny. Um, it is. It, do, it does make me laugh. I, I when I shaved my head the other week, um, I, I always do the leave the moustache till last and and ask the girls what they think, and they always think it's hilarious. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> but I was thinking when I shaved my head this time. I did the top of my head first, which I don't normally do, but I was I just did. And then I did I started doing my beard. And I thought I could have where my glasses sit, my sideburns, it's bald above there, like shaved bald, but then I have sideburns coming down and have it join up into a mustache. So like a handlebar, but without the chin bit. Oh. Have a oh, handlebar wow. mustache going up from the sideburns. When I take the glasses off, it's just the beard. I thought that might be fun for November, but I don't know. Mrs. F would be That's like, a great no, idea. no, yeah. don't do it. No, so like a no, like a George Washington, like a cowboy well, or no, something. You, no, yeah, like a um, proper proper cow. That sounds. Oh yeah, I was thinking. About I think it. that would be very funny. I was thinking about it, especially if you can pull it off. The other thing is, if you can, a lot of people are sadly not blessed with any facial hair genes, and I meet them and they're disappointed. Spiff. They're like Spiff is a prime oh, example. Is Spiff uh, seems unable to grow facial hair. He has a mustache, well, but it, it's the littlest mustache. It's like yes. peach fuzz. It really is. It it's is. very sweet. It's it's peach. It is really sweet. <laughs> I talked to him about but, it at the party. I was like, "What is this? Is this a mustache?" Yeah. But I think I was like that at his age. It took. I didn't get any strength in my facial hair until I was in my thirties. Um, just it just didn't come. You yeah. Know? Yeah. yeah. It happens. It happens. I think I think you get more um, from growing it out and then shaving it, growing it out, shaving it. I think if you just leave it and you don't really do much with it, or you're constantly shaving it short, it seems to not come in thick and fast. Yeah. I don't know. It, this is this is the old urban myth, though. I think that's bollocks. It's like it's like when there's a baby, they're like, "Oh, quick shave his. He hasn't got much hair, so you better shave it to get it to grow." It's in rubbish. Thicker. It's rubbish. I don't think that's true at all. I mean, what what happens is you get like essentially, especially for a baby, the first hair that they grow is incredibly fine. Yeah, it's very and very like fine, really yeah. fine. If you shave that, the hair that comes in will be thicker because it's proper hair because the follicles are developing and they're starting to grow hair. Right. So it's nothing to do with. But it's just so if you want your babies yeah. to have a beard shave their face <laughs> shave every day now, yeah. so that that it can come in thick and fast that's, <laughs> yeah. that's again no the opposite of that yeah, uh, don't do that. This is this is a, a cracker. cracker. This is from Zardi. Uh, good day, Pyrian. For a laugh, a couple of years back, I applied for the Guardian newspaper blind date and got accepted. The date went pretty badly after I. Oh, this is after glorious. I told the Guardian her, yeah. newspaper. So here is a link a to the article. Guardian here is a link reader. to the article. There you go. The lad's name is Zardi. He dated Nadia. 
This was from 2021. Oh, I, thought, I thought Zardi was the was the. No, Zardi is the, the lad. Name. Zardi is the okay. lad. Um, and look at that picture of <laughs> Zardi. It, oh, he's, he's got. He's, he's such got, a cheeky lad. I just. He's I didn't even read it. I just clicked a button that said yes, I'm happy, and it's true. I am happy because I'm looking at Zardi right now. Look at that the face. He's just Zardi like hello, I'm so Zardi. Happy. Yeah. Hello, you want chili sauce with that? That's what Zardi <laughs> looks like. <laughs> Top <laughs> lad. All right, so. <laughs> uh, it didn't get. It went badly after I told her I was oh, a trained please. butcher, and she was a vegetarian. Got a no! got a lot of hate online after that. No! The date was not the best, but it was a funny experience looking back on it. Zardi, I'm just going to read this. What were so? Uh, I'll ask the questions, Lewis, and you be Zardi, and so I'll ask the questions, and you give his answer, and then Sips, you do that for Nadia. Okay. Well, okay. Sure. Hang on. So where's, this, where's Nadia's stuff? See, at the bottom. So this is Zardi or Nadia. So this is Zardi answering the questions about how the date went with Nadia. What were you hoping for? Oh, I was, I was hoping for a laugh and a fun Wait, time. Wait, you're Zardi. And you're the, the bloke. Oh, sorry, shit. Egypt. Oh, <laughs> sorry, sorry. This is an interview with, with Zardi, right? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay. All right. He, he, I'm, do you know what I'm getting? I'm getting cheeky chappy yes. like vibes. I know you're getting kebab shop man. Um, I don't know why. I think it might be the neck beard. No, or it's, the, his like, name is Zardi, haircut. which I, it sounds like a Turkish name. I'm sorry if I'm uh, wrong, Zardi, but it seems to okay. me like a Turkish Do you want me to do a Turkish <laughs> yeah, I would man? love I would to hear love your this, Turkish yes. accent. Let's hear so it. Much. <laughs> what were you hoping for, Zardi? Uh, I was hoping for a <laughs> laugh and a fun time and that the conversation would flow nicely. <laughs> First impressions of Nadia. <laughs> oh, oh, she's attractive, smart, easy to talk to. And what did you talk about? <laughs> Food. <laughs> For a long, long time. Uh, we also talked about traveling, musical instruments, and the things we did during lockdown. Any awkward moments? I I drew a blank when she asked what my best dishes were to cook. I also confused a gooseberry with something else. <laughs> oh, there's going to be these moments, so awkward, my dude. Yeah. There's going to uh, be these moments. So just going through this, they go out for a meal, um, and essentially he would introduce her to his friends. He gave her an 8 out he of 10. He gave her 8.5 out of 10. 8.5 out of 10. Yeah, and then they were talking about going to a karaoke bar and singing Adele all night, but they ended up going to the tube station, so she called it a day. And then uh, they exchanged numbers. So who knows? That is Zardi's take on the date. It went well. She was interesting, affectionate, kind-hearted. He's worried that she thought he was nervous, but yeah, he's he'd happy to meet again. So this is Nadia on him. Right. What oh, were you no. hoping for? Someone tall, dark, and handsome <laughs> to sweep me off my feet. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> First impressions. Um. Not what I was what, what I was expecting. Um, <laughs> a bit shy. <laughs> Any awkward moments? Well, uh, when he told me his go-to karaoke song was Adele. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I'm more into classic rock and metal. Also, he mentioned that he is trained to butcher animals right after I told him I was a vegetarian. That's so oh funny. God. She's like, I'm a vegetarian. He must have been like, oh, the, how interesting. I, I butcher <laughs> animals for a living. <laughs> <laughs> you like me to strangle chicken for you? <laughs> I uh, kill chicken. Marks out of 10. Um, I had fun and the restaurant had a great vibe. But as a date, five out of 10. Would you meet again? No. <laughs> yeah, this is so sad. Oh, so Zardi's no, like, Zardi. she, she seems nice. Zardi, we really love that email, but that was fantastic. Oh, what an email. Zardi, this is so uh, fucking how, uh, typical. Was, how was it um, reading <laughs> reading this after the fact? Like, uh, yeah, had what you was been like? briefed at all, or did you just look at the article to see what she thought? I mean, obviously, you must have assumed that it didn't go amazingly well, uh, because, you know, she probably... She probably didn't stay in touch or whatever, but um, it must be kind of weird to read through this after, right? To see like what somebody thought, because like a lot of these questions are, you know, things that you might not ever get much feedback on. You just kind of have to guess what the other person is thinking, right? So, okay, questions about this. One, it was obviously a blind day and they, yeah, yeah. they, they don't intend, you know, the chances of them actually matching on this are low, but... I feel like it was scuppered from the start. He's 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 a twenty six year old chef, yeah, and she's a thirty she's a thirty two year old civil servant. Mm -hmm. I think if those ages were the other way around, that might just about be okay. Um, 
But like, it feels like no, it's it's unusual for again for a couple to have that much of an age gap in the wrong way. The wrong way. Yeah, and so I mean, it's almost like <laughs> it's almost like doing its best to kind of scupper it right from the start. The wrong you know I mean? like, way. Well, yeah, like it's just I, look, I'm sure I just don't know that many men who are dating a woman six years older than them. It's true. I I, mean, it's, I I do think that there are multiple reasons for that, especially when you're younger. Especially when you're 26. Right. I don't know. Like I I, I think I one, one of the reasons for that is, and I, I I'm sure viewers with it, right. Well, I you did like, call it the wrong way, which was well. I think it is though. I think. <laughs> I think that people are looking for their looking for any excuse to right. like and, and like they're they're always against like in their in their sub subconscious they're like thinking are people going to judge me for this am I like you know people going to call me a cradle snatcher for like flipping six years going out with a young oh, man are people gonna, I'm I'm thirty two I'm not a cougar right do you know what I mean. So like, I, I think the, the the thing that the people need to bear in mind, and I'm sure that we there will be listeners who disagree, but when women are with a younger man, that younger man better be on the same track as them in life, because a lot of women, when they get to their thirties, start seriously thinking about babies. And if you're a dude who's 25 and doesn't want to think about babies for years to come, you're gonna have a, a rude awakening because you're you're woman might be like, well, no, I want babies and soon and all the rest of it, because that's just the kind of age when people start doing that stuff. That's when me and pretty much all my mates all started having babies in our 30s. Yeah, um, I think that's it's a just, good, it's just good age the to right do it. kind of time, because you've enjoyed your 20s, you've, you've found a solid relationship, you want to start thinking about it. Yeah. If you're, I mean, women are having babies older and older, it's true, but it's harder and harder. And you'll be looking after young kids, um, you know, as you get older. It is hard, as, as Sips can attest. So yeah. people in their 30s, you've still got that energy and, you know, it's it's all the rest of it. And you've still enjoyed your 20s. So I think if you're 24, 25 and you're dating a woman who is 32, 33, she might be thinking about babies when you're not even, that's not even on the horizon for you. Yeah. So I, I think Lewis is right. It, ju let, it just let made us me know, laugh. though. Let, write in. Let us know yeah, if let you're in a know. relationship with a big age gap and how that it's working. That is a quote the wrong way around. In other words, older woman, younger man. We want to know. Well, I, think you, I know a few people who are married who the woman is a couple of years when old. You're, uh, yeah. When you're dating, Lewis, like um, you meet somebody you go on a date, like what... Um, no matter who it is, are you just like, do you just kind of go with the flow and have like a pretty good time? Or, or do some people naturally just put you off and, and you find it really difficult to, to have a good time even? You're I don't just... know if I've spoken about this before, but my dating strategy has turned strategy. into, <laughs> I, I want to go and do something, right. ah. like go to this art gallery or go to this museum or go to see this, this thing or go to this event. I'm going to try and bring someone with me to that, not and so that way that even if I don't like them, I've still had a good time. <laughs> That's right. a, such a good idea. I like that a lot. <laughs> I like but that like, a lot. but I, it's I just like you know like I watch um I, I watch say say you're watching like uh, you know like Blind Date or like Married at First Sight or something like that. You get you get people who seem um to to go with the flow more than others, right? Some people they 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 get in there and they're they're matched with somebody and they're put in with them and you could just tell straight away their back is up. They don't want to be there. They don't like the person. They don't even want to give it a chance. They're miserable, whatever. Um well yeah and absolutely I think when, I guess that when must that happens, happen if, just if when you're dating to as me, well, right? Like yeah, I think that I'm quite careful about who I see usually. So I've usually but what is it like a chemical thing? Like is, do some people just like naturally annoy you or something in your a lot of it is the 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 the, the gap between what you think they're going to be like or what they appear to right, be like on right. their profile to what they are in real yeah. life and it's not exactly catfishing but it is to some extent sometimes people are just not the same as their pictures and it feels like you've been scammed and if and if that happened to me i think or, or if they were really if they thought that had happened to them if they were really aloof and Kind of like, oh god! I, I think you could pick up on it pretty quick, and you could be like, oh, hey, um, well, look, had a really nice time, um, you know, see ya, finish your drink and go, you know. I think a lot of the time, the way I would do dates would be to have obvious breakpoints if I wanted to get out of there at half an hour, two hours, you know, four hours. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it, it. I don't. I think sometimes, <laughs> for for me as well as them, if they're not feeling it, they've got an obvious easy out, which is like, oh, you know. Do you want to go to this bar, or, or have you had enough, kind of thing? Um, and so I think I think that that, that most people are, are quite aware of the other people's feelings because you're so worried about how they're gonna judge you anyway, right? I suppose, um, yeah. And so if yeah, maybe on these shows like Married at First Sight and stuff, you can maybe it's the editing though. I don't know. 
I don't know how. Well, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of that. I just, I, I just, I, I, I noticed, I just noticed that some people just seem uh, like, like I, I feel like if I was on that, I would go with the flow a lot more. I'd be like, let's just see where it goes. You know, like I, I'm not going to be overly defenses up, barriers oh up, my God. sort of thing. Like I, I, I would you just, have to be. I, I think this is what Zardi was doing though here, be, right? I don't think Zardi was going into this date thinking, oh, this is going to be the one. Do you know what I mean? He was obviously thinking, you know, we'll see what happens. He was, he was hoping for a laugh and a fun time uh, and that the conversation would flow nicely, right? That's, I think that is the, the right thing to go into any of these things with, right. right? Because you don't know, even like, you know, after a few dates, you know, where, where this thing's going to go. But your, your mind sp spins out, you know, this, <laughs> this mad stuff that you have to like push down. You're like, because it's like, oh, what, a, what would our kids look like? You know, and you're like, oh my God. <laughs> you, you, like, you, do, you do kind of have to push down the crazy a little yeah. bit. Um, anyway, I, what do you think of the phrase tall, dark and handsome? Because that, I, think, I feel old, like it's such a trope. Like uh, yeah. it's an old, it's an old joke, right? It's an old cliche. But but like the tall, sure, the handsome, sure, right? The tall, they want tall and the, the nice jawline. You know, maybe wearing a suit. You know, maybe they're a doctor. But I I I'd still I feel like the aloof, cold, distant vibe of the dark kind of personality. Yeah, I know? don't know. It's, it's weird. It's kind. Of, it's a. It's a. It's a strange um, standard. A double standard because like. I feel like it's probably okay for most women to say that that's what they want, but it's probably not okay for men to say, I want a blonde with huge tits. <laughs> I want right. just a big titted I, blonde. Like, What's the equivalent of tall, dark, and handsome? I don't know. Well, um, for, for men. Uh, I want a bird with banging tits. <laughs> yeah, uh, pretty much. And, and I mean, don't get me wrong, people do say it, but I, I, for the most part, uh, you, you interview any guy and they'll just say, Oh, just somebody who's nice to talk to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just want somebody that I can talk to. Like, just want a girl no, who's nice to talk to and has massive knocks. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, so the tall, dark yeah. and handsome phrase came to prominent use in the early 1900s and was commonly used in Hollywood during the 1920s to describe Rudolph Valentino. Oh. As an idiom. Rudolph Valentino. Yeah, as an idiom, it is both lexically and sequentially fixed. I think that means you couldn't say handsome, dark, and tall. It has to be tall, dark, and handsome. It's got to be. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. Because it is, it is very much. Okay, interesting. Uh, I, mm. I think there is something that, that a, a lot of women like about a, a tall, dark, and handsome dude is, first of all, the implication dark is that they're going to have dark hair, because I think quite often blonde men are something that I don't think women are as famously keen on. It seems to be like darker okay. haired men, I think, is a thing. But I never, ever thought about yeah, that. Yeah, but what they like, I mean, again, this is generalizing, but I, I don't know that I've met many women who say <laughs> I'd say I'm they more... like men who are blonde. Yeah, well, I mean, Germans, probably. Yeah, so the they're... Aryan race produces <laughs> so guess... the best men, as we all know. <laughs> So I guess the equivalent would be busty, blonde, and beautiful. Yeah, busty, right? blonde, and beautiful. Yeah, I'm more like tall, dork, and handsome. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! I got my nice. Warhammer Fucking toys well. with me, baby. <laughs> Check this out. Everyone, just please my head enjoy on, that on the on the beam. I'm so tall. <laughs> oh my god! All right, let's wow. finish with um, some furry stuff. Because oh, I've had a lot man. of emails about furries. This is from Edwin. We're just going to remain confused. I feel like well, sometimes... Well, we're just glazing over the furries thing. No, no. Yes. No, no, <laughs> Naturally, on the, on the yes. Furries. I'm going to remain confused whatever you say okay. with the furries All right, well, thing, just... right? Because there's a few topics that I feel like I'm not young enough to or properly like able to talk about. Well, you know, true, I feel but like... I think a lot of young people also feel the same way and don't know what the fuck. And yeah, it's a, okay. very, it's a very sort of specific culture. It's a very niche. Freedom, yeah. isn't it? So this is from uh, Edwin. Uh, been an avid fan since 2017. Is that his fursona name? No, I don't believe so. Uh, I'd like to second Emma. It does sound like a, a, a an Edwin von Fluffertail. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to second Emma on her claims about furry fans. As a furry, I can confirm that most furries do not wear diapers slash nappies. 
Okay, Most but suit, if you're suiters, in the suit all day long at a con or something like that, yeah, come on, you've yeah. got a diaper on. They explain sure. that most of them would go go before suiting and wouldn't suit for too long anyway, as it's pretty much like wearing an oven. Could you? Some people put a little fan in the suit head to combat the heat. What problem. if you put like in the pants, uh, like a little dick hole, and then you could <laughs> stay in in your fursona and squat in a corner and and just pee through the dick hole like an animal. Yes. Well, uh, so this is the, f the f next paragraph. Furries aren't inherently sexual no. for most, but they absolutely can be. Yeah. Now, interestingly, you're talking about having a little hole so you can let your junk out to have a wee. Yes. I'm wondering if that's when people were like, ah, oh, we could also get some fucking done whilst we're wearing these <laughs> Well, yeah, of course. If we have these flaps. Um, uh, and for the ones that are sexual, he's saying, I'd say it's safe to say that most don't, don't do the do in their suits because it's too hot temperature wise. And two, because fursuits are very expensive and you don't want to get any bodily fluids anywhere near the four to five figure outfits, but there are some out there, of course. Um, it's kind of like real regular human life where we aren't inherently sexual, but can be when we're feeling like it. Another misconception that wasn't brought up in Emma's email is that zoo furries are not into bestiality. Uh, this is undoubtedly true for most furries. They are not into it. That's what that's what Edwin is saying. Yeah, now, yeah. No. I, I, I also I, I got wouldn't want, I wouldn't agree. within I, a agree. few want, hours of yeah. that email. Right. Greetings, you the lovely specimens. I have a response to Emma the furry's email. My fiance, who is also a furry called Emma, has been a furry for ten years. She has also started to distance herself from the furry community due to the disturbing amount of z yiffing, zoophilia, which is bestiality, and worse. In her opinions, fairies have gotten more and more deranged in recent years, with a worrying influx um, of under-18s being involved. Furry events used to be nice affairs with no issues. Now, they're more like kink parties. So there you go. Yes. Yeah. See, this is my. This is what I thought they were like back. You know, even like f a few years yeah. ago when we were going to these yeah. conventions. I feel like maybe it's different in different parts of the world. And also... Okay, d d there is definitely uh, some sexual aspect to it, right? The the furry cartoons. You know how like normal porn, okay, N as in porn. Yeah. Um, it's not the same as sex, right? It's this kind of glamorized version. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a lot. They're a professionals. Lot yeah. They're professionals. I mean, no, uh, like if you if you think of uh, of of natural like mother nature. Okay, I went to the zoo uh, last weekend. I took my kids to the zoo. We wanted to go see the capybaras because they they just got some at our zoo. And they have a nice enclosure for They're them. They're basically big guinea pigs. They are, big they are yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we went to we went to seek them out. And uh, while we were looking for this sounds them, sounds so wholesome. <laughs> we happened across uh, an enclosure filled with little monkeys, little tiny furry monkeys that had uh, like pink chests, like oh, uh, like, like pink pink bare <laughs> boobies, uh, like on their okay. chest. Sure, sure, sure. They all look the same except for one, who was like the king of them. I think it's huge. <laughs> it's a huge one. <laughs> He was perched up on the wall and he was overlooking his kingdom. He was huge. He had like, like he was much bigger. He had lots more hair and everything. Like he was just like the alpha of the whole group. He's just sitting there. And then all of the other ones are just, you know, uh, they're, they're eating leaves or sitting around or whatever. So this guy, he, he so we're, we stopped to watch because we just thought these, these guys seem kind of interesting. We've never seen them before. So the big guy gets down from the wall and starts doing this thing with his mouth. Like he's his teeth are clenched, but his lips are like flapping. Kind of like if you went like, right. you know, like with your lips, <laughs> but his teeth are clenched. And he's like, so he's doing this weird thing with his lips. And we were laughing because I'd never seen anything like it. Because he was going up to all of the other monkeys and doing this to them. And we thought, you know, whatever. It's like a comedy routine or something. <laughs> like it, it, it seemed very funny uh, until... He basically turned one of them around, uh, mounted up, and you you had to see this guy in action. Like it <laughs> oh my just, God. he was his 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 legs were completely spread out wide, bow legged. Like he looked like he just <laughs> entered a saloon in, in the wild west. He he so he mounts up. He's staring at everybody straight in the face while he's doing this because we're all watching because we can't believe what we're seeing. Sips of the whole family. Okay. Yeah. And then Stumped. he starts he starts pumping, but like his he's got this like really smooth natural hip motion to it, which okay. lasts about three seconds, and then he just sort of unmounts, and then uh, his partner just starts picking bugs out of his hair. Oh right. And that's it. Oh my god. Wow. Wow. Yeah, what a, what a the... trip to the zoo. Compare that, compare that to a porno <laughs> where people are pumping, 
for like 45, 55 minutes sometimes. And you just mm. think, where's the where the you know, where's the common ground here? What's the average? Because I, I guess yeah, this you is can't say a- that the three seconds versus fifty-five minutes straight. It's it doesn't add up, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I guess like uh, okay, like I can... when I say three seconds, I might even be being generous. <laughs> like I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure he got a boner and was done. And I, and I feel wow. like I, I feel like, you know, I, I feel like naturally that like especially for animals, it has to happen, right? They don't have hours to they're not wilding it's away very for vulnerable hours and hours. Position. I mean it's it is. Yeah. They gotta be quick, they gotta do the deed or whatever. And it's just very instinctive for them as well, right? Like, yeah. They don't even really I don't, I don't think know if that they enjoy it. I don't know. I don't know if, it, yeah, if that's a part of it. It's hard to tell. So yeah. anyway, I think that furry porn is largely cartoon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and oh my god, you should have seen that. There's so many people. I've never I've never been crying laughing so hard around lots of people like that. What, like public uh, it, people. Yeah, yeah. Who were watching like, this and monkey. everybody was the same. Like they oh were howling. God. It was so fucking funny. <laughs> there were these old ladies next to us and I've never they, they were like, oh my God. <laughs> like and like they were crying, laughing. Oh, it man. was so funny, man. Oh my, I think it's because uh, it's contagious. I think it's because you gave them permission to laugh at it rather holy than be horrified. Shit. My kids were like, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> Close your eyes. <laughs> They're just laughing. <laughs> Like a fuck, it was so funny. Yeah, I guess you didn't have any chance to react. Yeah, well, not really. Yeah, it happened. Yeah. It really happened quite oh, quickly. That's funny. Yeah. Anyway, I'm sure they're not going to turn up to be furries now because of that. No, no. Um, I think. I think like there's. A, I, I feel like in reality, when you've got like w- furry cartoons are like anthropomorphic poor pies. <laughs> well sexy, said. Yes. yes. Sexy. <laughs> sexy. Good recovery. Pitch, sexy cheetahs and tigers with boots or whatever. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's like, it's like the boots. guy walking and he trips and stumbles, <laughs> but like just takes it in his stride, yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. Whereas in real life, you've got someone in a fur suit. Like there's no there's no po- there's no cartoons that really represent someone in a fur. Well, maybe there is someone in a fur suit. I don't know. You're saying like, the reality like that- of it. So the reality of it is even bigger disconnect on normal porn, right? right? Between furry porn and I see. Yiffing. No, yes, that makes sense. Yeah, because I do. The whole thing feels like so weird and uh, like kind of obviously sexual attraction and the things that turn you on is a big spectrum, right? Like you know, there's a lot of people. You know, you can watch or see things that you think, oh, well, that shouldn't that shouldn't turn me on, but it does. You know, and I mean, everyone must have this, right? Like in some way. Um, and so, I just, I guess, like, I'm all, I'm all for people doing their own thing. Um, I'm just saying, we all just... got, we all got very fucking precious about this shit. It's fucking funny. It's funny. It is funny. Seeing people funny. dressed up as fucking tigers and sheep and all that and having sex with each other is amusing. I'm sorry. <laughs> it, it, it is it's, deeply That amusing. is fucking funny. Okay, good. But I'm glad. I'm glad. It is funny. It's funny to even think about it. Yes, um, it's funny. And I don't, you know, you, you can't dress up like that and then demand to be taken well, seriously. So I'm sorry, but you so can't. The, so people genuinely want to just be taken seriously? Yeah, I like think they're like, it's I, a big I, I deal for them. They're not like, oh, I know it's stupid. They're like, no, it's, I mean, you know, we get people emailing and really defending it and being like no no you don't understand i think it's it's i think it's just pretty fucking funny in all honesty i mean i'm not stopping you doing it so what do you care what my opinion is carry on yeah, do your thing who cares but i'm i'm also uh-huh. allowed to think it's funny i'm sorry but it is anyway okay, i agree okay end of mailbag i think that's the end of that topic yeah Probably the podcast as well, really. I think it's, uh, I think we're I think we're done. Do you after want this one more one. or are you done? Yeah, let's do one more. One let's, more? Let's, let, let's let's end it on All one right, more. This is a, this is quite a funny story. Um please keep my name anonymous. Will do. Uh as technically my story is an illegal is activity. That his name? Will do. <laughs> the story is technically an illegal activity, so best not mentioned by name. The Japanese right. are pretty strict when it comes to the law, and I don't want to get deported. Cheers. Um okay. so about about six years ago, me and a couple of friends were on holiday in Japan and went mountain climbing on a small island off the coast of Hiroshima. There was a temple nice. at the top with a bunch of these small clay statues depicting praying monks. There was uh-huh. a donation bowl amongst the statues and temples in Japan often have trinkets you can buy as a memento or protective charm, stuff like that. 
Uh, there were a fuck. couple of other stalls, but is there this was... going to be like that guy who was like, "I rely on tips, and you and you didn't <laughs> tip me when you went to Japan." You'll see, because I'm pretty sure I went to that. There were a couple well. of other stalls, but there was nobody around at all, and the transactions were done on a faith-based system where they expect you to pay the asked for price by leaving the money in a wooden box, similar to how eggs are sold outside farms in the countryside in Ireland, uh, which is where this right. that's from. We had mistimed right. our climb and got to the top around 7 p.m. So it was already sunset when we reached the top and we had to walk down a mountain in the dark using our phones as flashlights. This was made all the more fun because of the many signs along the route that said, beware of the venomous vipers. Anyway, we decided we would buy some of these statues as a souvenir of our ordeal. We put about a thousand yen in the donation bowl, thinking that was enough. They look a bit like these. And there's a picture of these little, little statues. Let me just show you lads a picture of the statues real quick. Thousand yen. So what's that? Like seven pound like, fifty? I guess that is, yeah. All right, this is what the statues look like. There is a picture. Little little oh, stone statues. So imagine little, if you yeah, were they the look sort like of monks. thing. Yeah, the little thing you'd put in a garden. You could imagine it like that. Skip forward yeah. about four days. We are halfway across the country on the day before our flight home. We went drinking with our friend and two of his Japanese colleagues and ended up going back to his house after the pub. The topic of our adventures on the mountain came up and we showed our Japanese drinking buddies the statues we'd bought. One was shocked, the other looked a little hurt, and the other immediately burst out laughing. As it turns oh, out, God. these were not souvenirs for sale. These are called Jizo statues and were made as religious oh, artifacts God. to protect travelers on the mountain or to honor a deceased family member. The homemade Whoa. look of them meant that these were made by people who offered them to the mountain god and each had a kanji symbol carved in the back to symbolize the maker's wishes. Mine said, fertility. I may be responsible for a small part of the declining birth rate in Japan. <laughs> oh my With God, no oh way man. back to the mountain, we decided to hold on to them and return them as penance. One of my friends forgot his on a, in a hotel in Latvia on the way home, and the other hasn't returned to Japan yet. I, however, have returned to the mountain and forgot to pack the fucking statue. So I need to make another pilgrimage of forgiveness to return the fertility statue. Holy crap. Unfortunate. Oh, great story. That is a good story. Wow. That is a good that story. That is a good story, yeah. Unfortunate as well. I'm sure these mistakes are common. And uh, that sounds like a much, that sounds like a legitimate one. They're pretty the common, I think, but also possibly punishable by death as well. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, who knows? Uh, watch your back. I'm sure, oh. you know, if you explain the situation, you didn't destroy the statue. It was an easy mistake to make. And these are the cultural differences you're going to get when you go somewhere. You don't know. Save it for the judge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, good. That's our mailbag. Yeah, I enjoyed that. That's a great, great that mailbag. That was a great mailbag. Really thank you, good. Thank yeah, you, Thank guys. you so thank much. Thank you to everyone thank that emailed in. Thank you for writing in. in. Yeah. yeah. I, I've been Thanks. replying to a few of the ones we haven't been reading out, because some of them are, are really nice emails, and I, I would read them out, but they're just... They don't really fit. They're just a little too long, or yeah, it's just yeah, kind yeah. of, or it's just, just finding the right. Yeah, ones, but yeah. a lot of people saying that they love the podcast. Thank you so much. We really do appreciate. Thank it. you. And uh, yeah. we, keep, we love keep doing it coming. as well. God, we've been we doing do. it for a long time. We, we have. So keep those mails coming because uh, we we read the good ones. Um, we yeah. love you. Thank you. Bye. Have Bye. A good one. Bye. Bye.